Um, I interviewed Nishant Kumar from um, John Hopkins University, and he hosted a Shark Tank event. And this Shark Tank event was mainly geared towards the BME, which is a biomedical engineering um, student. Uh, the participants for the Shark Tank were grad students, and it kind of was like whole and solely funded by the BME department. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, he, the reason that they wanted to fund one was because the biomedical, depart, uh, biomedical engineering department wanted um, the JHU hospital physicians um, and faculty to see that their students had a lot of talent and that that could be, um, you know, brought on and like you know done so much more with. Also, um, one of the like the needs was that the biomedical students were so great with, you know, the engineering aspect, the uh, uh, medical aspect, the bio aspect, but they weren't that great in, you know, actually commercializing um, or even pitching their ideas to people who, you know, didn't have the biomedical engineering uh, knowledge that they did. So to kind of dumb down um, their product, their research, to kind of try to pitch it to um, the requirement of, you know, how to hold yourself in a pitch, that wasn't, you know, one of the, um, talents that the biomedical students usually had. So it was kind of to foster that as well. Um, this event was held in their, kind of like their JHU hospital grad, um, grad student campus, which was about 30 minutes away from their undergrad campus, um, which, so that kind of made it so that it was more geared towards physicians, graduate students, a few undergrad students and faculty. Um, and so that's, that's where that was held. Uh, the audience that this was able to reach was mainly um, the faculty, the graduate students, a few undergrad students, and a lot of JHU positions. Um, they, what, the way that they ran this was kind of, they kind of split it up into speakers, undergraduate, undergraduate posters, and then the graduate shark tank. And this kind of was like an all-day event. They kind of had the speakers earlier in the morning, and then they had um, their undergrad uh, poster session throughout the afternoon, and there was a very slight overlap between the undergrad session and the graduate um, Shark Tank event. Uh, so there was just just so that they could get everything done on site. Um, but it kind of became a whole day event. Um, they made sure to run during lunch, so that because what they did was their venue was like a glass room. So when people were going back to their offices through like after lunch, they'd see this and you know it would spark curiosity and they'd come in and just check out what it is. So they made sure that it was running during lunch. Um, they were able to get, uh, they didn't actually tally how many people were there and who came per se, uh, but they were able, they were able to estimate about 80 people coming and going. Um, nobody stayed throughout the, like throughout the entire day. Uh, but, you know, coming and going, they think they might have gone about 80 to 100 other people. Um, they invited two speakers, Dr. Vatham Gulati and Henry Ahn. Um, Dr. Bu uh, Dr. Gulati was more of kind of the more um, academic side of this, where Henry Ahn was kind of more of the um, industrial side. Um, Dr. Gulati holds many degrees in biomedical engineering. Henry on has his own startup in the biomedical field. So they were both brought in to talk kind of about their own experiences, which are vastly different because they're from different sides of the industry. Um, reaching how they reached out to these speakers, they kind of both had some tie to JHU. Um, either they'd worked with the faculty in JHU, or, you know, they'd spoken before, or, you know, they just heard of them before. Um, so they, they were kind of heard of through JHU, except, um, but they reached out through them by emails and cold calling them and just, you know, asking when they were free and, you know, kind of just pushing them to try to come. Uh, there weren't many costs um, just because the BME department was funding the entire event, so budget really wasn't a constraint. Um, the only places that required, um, you know, some sort of payment was they required a nominal fee for the venue. Um, food was catered for the audience and the participants, so, you know, that requires some money, and, you know, the prize money, which initially they weren't even thinking of giving real money as prize money. They were thinking of just making it fake money, um, but in the end, they did end up giving away prize money, so that was kind of kind of cool, um, and that was the only real cost that they had with their event. Um, the date and time were planned beforehand. It was done during the weekday, so it was really difficult for them to find a, a time where, you know, 
it was convenient for everyone, for undergrad, for faculty, for physicians, for graduate students. So they kind of just chose the best of both, like best of all these worlds. Um, they, what they did do, though, was um, send, save the dates to people that they really wanted to be there. So, you know, some of the faculty, uh, the head of faculty, that they really wanted them to attend. Um, so the physicians, they, re they send, save the dates months, two months in advance so that they could ensure that people would show up. Um, no sponsors were needed, as the B&E department kind of funded the entire event. Uh, I already covered space. Um, branding, they did throw around a few names other than Shark Tank. Uh, just because Shark Tank, um, if anybody's watched a TV show, it's kind of more cutthroat. Um, they will tell you that your idea sucks. Um, and that's not really what they wanted to promote. They kind of wanted to tell the guys that, yeah, your ideas are all great. They all require some work, um, but you know, you're on the right path. But this is kind of how you throw a pitch. This is kind of what you, you should expect if you do go to VC. Um, so they, so the overall message was that they were all great ideas to work on. However, there was a winner. Um, and you know, the judges were really nice about it. They did say, uh, you know, these are all great events. These are all, these are all great ideas. However, you know, the real work, wor real world, works in a certain manner, and it requires for you to have, um, you know, there will always be a winner and there will always be a loser. So they did kind of do a blend of both worlds for that. Promotion, um, to raise awareness, uh, flyers were handed out in their common area. A Facebook page was created um, to inform the undergrad students, um, all the say the date, uh, and graduate uh, students were informed via email. Uh, the support, you guys pretty much ran itself once all the preliminary things were done. Um, you know, the main, the main support was needed to set up and break down the venue, to guide the audience, and then kind of to judge the Shark Tank event. Um, the logistics, you know, the main thing kind of were that everybody knew what was going on and was on the same page. Um, the say the dates were sent out earlier, you know, way earlier, a month or two months in advance. Um, Nishad did say that a month or two months sounds like a lot, except that these people are booked up maybe six months, you know, in advance. So you really have to be kind of on point to kind of send these, save the dates out. So you have to know, you know, your date from beforehand and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, and then the catering needed to be done for the day of the event. So um, that was kind of done beforehand. But other than that, there really wasn't any major uh, logistics. As long as everybody kind of knew where they were supposed to be um, and kind of just got there, you know, the event kind of ran itself, per se. Um, media captured, Shark Tank event was not captured through videos or photographs due to IP restrictions. Um, a lot of the graduate students, you know, kind of were still working on that, so they didn't want, um, you know, their research to kind of be, you know, broadcasted to the whole world before they had a chance to protect themselves. Um, but however, the speakers did ask for their speeches to be recorded, which could be found on their website. Um, the evaluation, yeah, they got around 80 people, you know, people were coming and going. Um, save, the save the dates were sent out, um, as I mentioned earlier. Um, future leadership, no specific person was um, chosen to lead Shark Tank after, you know, the JHU UIF fellow graduated. Um, what did happen was Nishant was part of, um, you know, kind of like a marketing entrepreneurship group at JHU, so they kind of like fell into their reins. But um, because Shark Tank was, you know, done, done, you know, kind of like together, collaboratively with the BME department, if the BME department wanted to run it again, they would be able to tell the student exactly how to do it. So that's kind of um, one of the ways that the BME department can ha ha like work with the group that uh, Nishant was in to kind of run it further. Um, the lessons that. Uh, Nishan said that we should learn that, that he would do differently is that he wouldn't have made it such a niche um, of an event. So instead of going to just the BME department, he would have probably chosen to open up to all the engineering department, or even better, kind of the, the entire university. Um, so that, you know, there could be more people um, that would want to come and do this. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the things that he would want to do. Other than that, he also was um, hoping like that the next Shark Tank event, what, the venue would be closer to the undergrad because there is a more population of undergrad than it, there is for the rest. So um, that way that they could get more people to show up and they would reach a higher impact. 